bonds payable. We've been talking about that in financial accounting. Did you know that a bond is issued in thousand dollar increments? So when you have a bond, it's usually a thousand dollars. So when we are looking at retiring bonds, uh, especially in converting them into stock, we have to think about how many shares of stock does each thousand dollar bond receive in exchange. And we're going to be looking at short exercise 8. And in short exercise 8, we are going to convert $1,200,000 of bonds, which is not all of our bonds, but some of our bonds into stock. In other words, the bondholders are now going to become stockholders. Now to do that, we're going to be debiting bonds payable because those 1.2 million in bonds go away. And we're going to have to credit common stock for the shares of stock we're giving in exchange times their par value. Anything that doesn't balance, we use additional paid in capital. Uh, and that's going to be our fabulous plug in this entry. Um, now, we also have to get rid of any premium or discounts that we have on these bonds. So let's take a look at short exercise 8. It says that we have a company that has 2 million of 6% bonds outstanding. Currently there's 40,000 in unamortized discount. So the discount that I'm going to have to get rid of on these bonds payable will be a proportionate amount of that $40,000 discount that pertains to what? The $2 million in bonds that are outstanding. How much are we retiring? $1.2 million. So if I take uh, like $1,200 over $2,000 or $12 over $20 or whatever proportion where you drop your zeros to times $40,000 in your unamortized discount Will that give you the amount of discount that you also have to get rid of? And that happens to be $24,000 of discount that pertains to the $1.2 million in bonds. So we get rid of the bond. We get rid of the discount that pertains to it. Uh, we know we're going to give them stock. Well, how many shares? It tells me that the bonds are converted at a rate of 20 shares per of $10 par value common stock for each $1,000 bond. So if I've got 1,200,000 in bonds coming in and I divide that by $1,000 because each of those bonds is 1,000, I find that the number of uh, bonds I'm talking about here is what? 1,200 bonds. And each one of those $1,000 bonds is going to get how many shares of stock? 20 shares of stock. So 1,200 bonds times 20 shares of stock means we're talking about 24,000 shares. But that's shares, isn't it? And we need a dollar amount here. So what we're going to do is take those 24,000 shares times their par value. Now you're saying to yourself, what is par value? Well, par value is $10. Well, what is that? On a stock certificate, there may be a dollar amount listed, printed on the stock certificate. And that's called its par value. So printed on the stock certificates, $10 for each share. So if I take 24,000 shares, times $10, that means that I'm going to be crediting common stock. I'm giving $240,000 worth of stock in exchange for these bonds. You're like, oh my goodness, this entry doesn't balance at all, does it? Not at all. So do you think these bond, these stock, even though its par value is $20, is trading on the, the stock exchange for a lot more than $20 a share? Yes, and so that difference is called the additional paid in capital or what the investors paid above and beyond the par value. And that's our fabulous plug. So let's see what that is. 1.2 million 
minus 24,000 minus 240,000 means our plug is $936,000. So if I make this entry, am I converting or bringing in bonds and issuing stock in payment of those bonds? Isn't that nice? No money. <laughs>